Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. And this is question number four from the International A-Level at Excel Mechanics M1, January 2022 exam. And this question here <coughs> is about a ball which is projected vertically from a point A at time equals zero, which is 24.5 meters above the ground. The ball first comes to instantaneous rest at the point B, where AB equals 19.6 meters, and first hits the ground when t t time t equals capital T seconds. The ball is modeled as a particle moving freely under gravity. Find the value of capital T, the time when it hits the ground. The time between it was thrown and the time um, until it hits the ground. Okay, so that's what we have to do here. So let's make a, a diagram to try to illustrate this situation here. So it's, it's projected from a point above the ground. Okay, so let's just make this as our point above the ground. And that point is 24.5 meters above the ground. So I will just put that in there. So this is like 24.5 meters above the ground. Okay, so that's 24.5 meters. That's the point A above the ground. And that's when time equals zero. So I'll just put time equals zero over there. All right, and it's projected upwards. So it goes upwards and it comes to instantaneous rest the top of its flight somewhere over there and then it falls back down again to the ground so here's the ground over here this is the ground okay so this is the point b which is where it comes to instantaneous it's thrown up because it's um, it's under the force of gravity which is you know acting downwards it comes to instantaneous rest and then it falls down to the ground so the, the height that it reaches is given to us. The height that it reaches above the ground is also given to us. And that is this distance here until B, which is 19.6. So A to B is 19.6 meters. Okay, so that's the distance from A to B. Okay, then it falls back down to the ground at this point. Let me call the point C where it hits the ground. Now, we want to find the time from when it was thrown until it fell and hit the ground okay so that's the time we want to find so we can we there's a number of, of uh, methods we could use okay i could find i could think about from a to b first find the time it takes to go from a to b and then find the time it takes to go from b to c that's one way of doing it i'll, I'll do that first let's look at a to b we have to so we're starting at a and finishing at b that's the first that's like the first portion of it so from a to b we, we're going to use SUVAT because it's under constant acceleration. So we're going to take the SUVAT equations. So it's being projected upwards. So I'll take up as positive. Okay, that's what's how it's been projected. And gravity is acting downwards. Okay, gravity, the acceleration due to gravity, of course, is downwards. So here, if I'm taking up as positive, B is 19.6 meters above A. So that's the displacement. The initial velocity, we don't know. The final velocity we know is zero because it has um, reached instantaneous rest by the time it got to B. The acceleration, if we take up as positive, is negative 9.8. And the time is what we have to find. So I'll call that T1. That's T1. And we know that our T is going to be T1 plus T2, which would be the second time I find when it goes from B to C. So now, so this won't be our, our final answer, but I've got S and I've got V and I've got A and, a, and I've got T. So I can use the equation s equals vt plus a half a t squared ut plus a half a, it's vt minus a half a t squared actually that's the equation vt minus a half a t squared that's one of the equations of motion okay vt minus a half a t squared okay there's s equals ut plus a half a t squared and there's vt minus a half a t squared so here we got to find what t is all right, so if I substitute the values in, I have 19.6 equals uh, 0 times t, uh, cap, uh, t not, not capital T, this is T1 actually, 0 times T1, capital T is the sum of T1 and T2, uh, minus a half times negative 9.8 times T1 squared. Okay, so you have 19.6, whoops, you have... 19.6 divided by 
and this is going to be um, 4.9 and that's t1 squared because the half times I'm putting it is 4.9 that's right so our answer is going to be we have 19.6 divided by 4.9 which gives us 4 so t1 squared equals 4 therefore t1 is equal to 2 seconds you can't have a negative so 2 seconds that's t1 and then for the second part of the um, situation here is when we're going from B to C. Now from B to C, uh, we have S, U, V, A, N, T. I'll just stick to taking up as positive. Okay, you take it up as positive. So our displacement from B to C, now we, we start, we're thinking about from B to C, the displacement is all of this, which is 19.6 plus 24.5. So 19.6 plus 24.5, that gives us 44.1. Okay, so the displacement, if I'm taking up as positive and we're going from B to C, it's negative 44.1. Okay, and U is zero because it's starting from its instantaneous rest, and then it's going to go down. V, we don't know. The acceleration, again, I'm, as I'm taking down as, um, as up as positive, down will be minus 9.8, and the T is the second section of the time. So from here to there is T1, and from there to there is T2. All right, so now we have the equation S equals UT plus a half AT squared. S, U, A, and T. We can use this equation, so negative 44.1 equals U, which is 0 times T, T2 this time, plus a half times negative 9.8 times T2 squared. So you have negative 44.1, this is zero, you're gonna end up with divided by negative 4.9 equals T2 squared. So you have 44.1 divided by 4.9. So 44.1 divided by 4.9 gives you nine. So you have T2 squared equals nine. So therefore T2 is equal to three seconds. Therefore our time is Time 1 plus time 2, the time from it going from A all the way to C is time 1 plus time 2, which is 2 plus 3, which is 5 seconds. Okay, that's one way of answering the question by putting it into sections. Okay, another way we could have worked this out is by using the first part, this first section, to find what U is. Okay, we could have found what U is by using v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Okay, so let me just uh, show you how to, this is an alternative method. This is an alternative method, which I'll show you now. So we could have used this first section here. Let me just get this all copied up. As I was mentioning, the alternative method is we could have um, used this information to find um, what u is. We could have found what u is. Okay, so what we could have done is we could have used v squared equals u squared plus 2as, and we know v is 0, we have to find u, we know that a is negative 9.8 and s is 19.6. So we could have found the initial speed with which it was thrown, so u would be, let's work that out, 2 times 9.8 times 19.6. Okay, which is 384.16. That u squared would be 384.16. So u would be, time to find the square root of the answer. That gives me 98 over 5. 98 over 5, which is 19.6. 19.6 meters per second. So that's the initial velocity, which is 19.6 meters per second okay so that's the initial velocity so now we, what we could do then is go straight from a to c directly if we go from a to c directly we have s u v a t so that we know that the displacement from a to c is negative 24.5 again i'm taking up as positive okay so from a to c the displacement is negative 24.5 the initial velocity is 19.6 okay that's upwards the final velocity we don't know. The acceleration is negative 9.8 as we're taking up as positive again. And the time is what we have to find that capital T. That would be therefore the that would give us the, the, the time from A all the way to C. 
that will give us the time directly. So we have S, we have U, we have A, we have T. So we can use S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So in this case, how our S is minus 24.5 equals U, which is 19.6 times T, which is capital T, plus a half times A, which is negative 9.8 times t squared. So we'll end up with this quadratic equation, which we have to solve to find what t is. Okay, so let's, um, this is going to be, you'll end up with this on this side, that will be 4.9 t squared minus 19.6 t minus 24.5 equals zero. And if we solve this quadratic equation, okay, we can use the quadratic formula if we want. We'll have t equals minus 19.6 minus minus 19.6 which is 19.6 plus or minus the square root of 19.6 squared b squared minus 4 times 4.9 times that's 4 times a times c which is minus 24.5 all over 2 times a in fact yeah 2 times a 2 times 4.9 i think there's an easy way to do this actually if i divide everything by 4.9 i think Divided by 4.9. Okay, yes, actually, let me just do this by factorizing. It's much easier, although I'm almost there. But you see, all of these are divisible by 4.9. Um, so if I, if I divide 19.6 by 4.9, you see, what, what do we get? We get 4. So this is like, divide everything by 4.9. Okay, this will be t squared. What's happened here? Okay, so this will be t squared minus, and we, as we said, this is 4 times t minus, and we've got 24.5, also divided by 4.9. That gives us 5. Okay, that's that's easy. Just to solve that, we have t, um, and you're going to have minus 5, and t plus 1 equals 0. So therefore, t equals 5, and t equals minus 1, doesn't make sense okay so t equals 5 is the answer okay so we got the same answer um, two different methods okay both methods are perfectly fine okay um, it's absolutely fine whichever you choose okay and um, you know if we had used a quadratic formula we would have got the same two answers but I just spotted that because I knew the answer is 5 exactly it must be something that factorized so I said okay let's just see if they're all divisible by 4.9 and they were and they give you a very simple equation that you can factorize and solve without having to go to the formula so there we end up with the answer so um, different methods that we can use to solve such equations or such problems but we have to just keep things certain things very clear in our minds one is the direction that we take as positive and the fact that s is not the distance traveled like here we don't say between a and c it's travel 44.1 no between a and c its displacement is negative 24.5. Its displacement between A and C is negative 24.5. Its displacement between A and B is positive 19.6. Okay, C is below A, we're taking up as positive. So the displacement is, even though it's gone up and come down again, S does not mean the total ground or the total distance it's traveled. It means its displacement from the pl place that you're starting from. We're starting from A. So the displacement from A is negative 24.5 because we're taking up as positive. So that's something that's very um, important for you to keep clear in your head. All right, it's very important. Okay, so now the second part of the question all right, is, um, is telling us to draw a or sketch a speed time graph for the motion of the ball from t equals 0 to t equals capital T seconds. No further calculations are needed in order to... Okay, so we don't have to put any values in really so we have to just draw our have our axes for speed this is speed not velocity okay so this is the speed against the time this is in seconds this is in meters per second so now it starts off okay being projected with a particular speed which we've actually calculated as 19.6 although we don't really need to mark it there yeah? but we know it was it can it starts off with that speed and it's fallen to the it's it's gone up to its highest point. Do this. It's gone up to its highest point. Okay. Um, 
and it's when it reaches its highest point its speed becomes zero and then it starts falling down okay and it falls down and it goes past the point at which it was projected until it hits the ground okay so it hits the ground with a speed greater than with which it was projected because it's gone further than um, it was you know it's gone further down past where it was projected until it hits the ground okay so I think this is all we need to show we can show that this is three seconds if you want we can show that this was uh, sorry this is five seconds sorry and this was two seconds I think okay so we could we could show that if we want to but I don't think we need to actually mention anything we know that this is five seconds total this is two seconds um, that's 19.6 and I don't think we had to calculate the speed, so that's fine. So without any further calculations, so I'm guessing even if we just drew these lines without marking anything, where this line must be longer than that line, and they should have the same um, kind of steepness but in opposite directions. Now this is a speed time graph. If they said sketch a velocity time graph, then it would look like this. This would continue on. Whoops. It would look like this. If it was a velocity time graph, this would just continue on. With that same gradient but go to a lower position it would be longer so it would be like almost like a mirror image this section here would be a mirror image of what's up there it would just be reflected in this way in this because the velocity okay um time graph is is going to be you know um like this because the velocity is dealing with the speed and you know the direction and here the velocity becomes zero and then it becomes negative because it changes direction okay so the velocity is positive here because it's going upwards we're taking up as positive uh, and then it, the velocity becomes negative okay so the velocity must change its sign okay so that would be a velocity time graph mm -hmm. to show the same situation but here they ask for a speed time graph where speed does not have a direction just the magnitude so it's the magnitude of the velocity becomes zero then the magnitude of the velocity increases again so that's how you draw a speed time graph as compared to a velocity time graph this is a speed time graph so that's how you do it so that's the answer to part b and that completes this question number four other questions from this particular paper can be found in the link that um the that appears over here and other questions from this topic of um, kinematics i guess uh, motion under gravity can be found in the link that should appear in this area. Okay, this is to do with SUVAT equations, and you can then subscribe to the channel by clicking on the link in the middle here. Thank you for watching, and see you soon.